we previously derived the Euler buckling load and wrote it in terms of the effective length, which is a factor k that depends on the end restraints of the column multiplied by the length of the column. Now if we divide both sides by the cross-sectional area of the column, then we get the critical buckling stress is equal to pi squared by the Young's modulus and recall that the radius of gyration of a section was defined as the square root of the second moment of area on the cross-sectional area. So therefore I on A is R squared. And that's divided by the square of the effective length. And then doing a bit of algebra, we can write this as pi squared E on the effective length on the radius of gyration squared. And this here is the slenderness ratio, and the critical buckling stress is inversely proportional to the square of the slenderness ratio. So you get a curve that looks something like this. So if you have a very slender column that looks something like this, for example, so it has a long length relative to the radius of gyration of this cross section. So this column is more slender, so the slenderness ratio is higher, and therefore the critical buckling stress for this column is lower. So it's more easy to make it buckle. And at the other end, you have a short stocky column that may look something like this. So its length is quite short compared to the cross section. So in this case, the column would likely yield before it buckles. So this is your critical buckling stress for the column. And therefore for this type of column, you may approximate the critical buckling stress, for example, as pi squared by the tangent modulus on the slenderness ratio. So as we know when a material yields, such as steel, the Young's modulus or stiffness of the material reduces. Please subscribe, like and comment to help me reach more students.